uh, uh, listeners together. Let's say you're welcome. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, you will have speakers almost everywhere, and mics rather, so that when you shout like that, they can hear you. We already have one cam video camera. We are waiting for one other thing to come true so that we can begin also to do the video. So that even when there's live streaming, it's not only the voice, but it can also be video. Like I warned you last time, as October is here, please make sure that you come fasting so that you don't doze. And then they see you on the Facebook, that, that one. I'm inviting you for Fridays for a reason that I'm taking a series on fasting that may not be repeated on Sunday. It will really bless you. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 14. Luke, chalenga 14. We're going to read Wanasoma. from verse 15. 15. The wisdom of soul winning and discipleship. Now when of the, now, now when now when those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him. Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, go out quickly. Say after me, go out quickly. <laughs> Say it again, go out quickly. It says, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring, bring in, bring them in or bring in here the poor, the maimed, the lame and the blind. And the servant said, master, it is done as you commanded and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that in that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall test my supper. Amen. Amen. Let's talk today on the wisdom of soul winning and specifically on go out quickly and bring them in. Go out quickly and bring them in. How many are in the house today can specifically say, you know, I came to the feast of the gospel when my neighbor or my friend or my father or my somebody invited me. Is there anybody like that in the house? How many of you were invited to come to the Lord? So how did many of you come? Okay, I didn't, I didn't understand the question. Eh? How many of you came to the Lord Jesus or came to God by invitation by somebody? How many of you came by crusade? None, only one. How many of you were born in church, grew in church, born again in church? I see some hands. 
Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Eighty percent of the people that are enjoying the supper of the gospel were invited by someone. Somebody invited them. They didn't come on their own. 80%. For let's say 70% for the sake of other, for argument's sake. Now, go out is part one of our discussion today. In few minutes, I'll be done. Go out quickly and bring them in. Ladies and gentlemen, there is an urgent command from God to go out quickly into the streets. Lanes, into the highways and hedges. And compel them to come into the house of the Lord and feast on the gospel. I will repeat that again. Because at the end of this, the, the Lord again put it on my heart late in the evening, even after uh, Sis Wendy had left, late in the evening, I had to, it, I usually do it through Dr. Dan, but this time I did it my, myself. God, as I sat on that table, desk, when everybody had left, I was praying over that. And as I was praying, God spoke to me something that I would say, he said to me, you must do it some action tomorrow. So, it says, it is not a message I want you just to preach and talk, talk teach. I want you to make sure you tell or you do an action rather, not just do an action with them. And we will do that very soon. We must catch from the Lord Jesus Christ a sense of agency to bring them in in the house of the Lord. We need to do so. We cannot afford please hear me very well. We can't afford to continue the way we are, the way we have been, and the way these things have been. No. We have to catch the sense of agency. To bring them in. Have you noticed something that is happening which is very interestingly and very modern? I haven't seen it for past years I have lived on earth years, years. the Jehovah's Witness have now brought in a new technique they, they no longer they still do it on Sundays mornings or so but if you have noticed now they have created some kind of uh, a stand they put their books there or magazines and they sit there the, almost the whole day whether you like it or not they still catch an attention of one person and Jesus said Yes, what is it? doesn't take many for the angels to stop worshiping God and begin to celebrate the winning of a soul. He says, only one soul. That's what it takes. Now, to be honest with you, they don't have the gospel. They have a religion. 
Benaba kuata buka pepa. So they have a new technique. Eicho ba kuata umusango. Because when I spoke to one of them, I said, why are you doing this these days? He said to me, the world is changing and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's about to come back soon. They have caught what they would call a sense of agency. But the evangelicals and the Pentecostals. No. They are still sitting in their boats of luxury. Yachets. You and I must change and get into the warships. No, worship. A ship which we have to change that. We must go quickly and bring them. In. Don't just go Bring them in For supper We must go quickly We must begin To understand and catch the agency We must pray for a hunger for God. No, for the people to have a hunger for God. And his word. In the nation. We need to pray that. We must pray. That there will be a people. People will begin to be so hungry for the word of God. Our neighbors. Our relatives, the nation, our friends, pray that God will create in them the hunger for His word. Amos chapter one, chapter eight, verse eleven. Amos eight eleven. We have to do that. That there must be a hunger in the nation from the sinners of the sinners looking for God. The Bible says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God. That I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread. No, a thirsty for water. But of hearing the words of the Lord. There must come a thirst and a hunger to hear the word of God in this nation. Lift up your right hand to the Lord and say, Father, Tata. please say it with confidence. Father, Tata. say it in faith in the name of Jesus. I pray for this nation to have a thirst and a hunger for hearing the word of God for salvation for healing for prosperity in Jesus name we have to pray I think it was last time I said to you have you ever sat down and see what's happening out there we are not in heaven yet. But the issue is that 80% of our times we have closed ourselves from the world. No. Get out there. there is issues out there that cannot be solved by anything else except by the word of God. We have to go out quickly. Give an example of JWs. No, I gave you an example of JWs. But you also know the STAs. The STAs target 
united there about three, two years ago or plus to win one million people to, their, to, to, to Sabbath. And they did that. And they went and celebrated that particular um, time. Um, they set a goal and the, the years passed and they went and celebrated it. I remember it was in the stadium and the guest of honor was the president. I looked at that. It is not so with us. No. We don't set goals for so winning. I was sitting in the office today I saw a number of you walking and my mind went back the way you have been coming to church you have been coming alone that's the same way you have been coming you are even growing older than it was and you are still coming the same way you were coming and I was watching some of you are driving you drove you have been driving that way Coming to this church, for example, from the time we shifted here, alone, go out quickly. Bring them in. Jesus yes. is commanding us. I know we are waiting for miracles. But he said, go out there. We must trust God to open our eyes to see, identify hungry sinners for him. And grant us wisdom to know how to bring them at the feast of the gospel. Let me give you something that I have just learned from one of the meat committees that I'm in. And I went in that committee. I mean, many of the men of the big shops and you know, the inside of these big shops and small shops. But I went in that uh, committee rather. The court committee. It's called leadership initiative. Not because I couldn't stay away. But I felt I need to know what these guys are doing. And they have taught me something that we will implement in the next, about early next year somewhere there. Very simple. This man came all the way from Kenya and said, you cannot win a leader by them just walking. In front. It says rare. Would you have a minister just walk in front and lift up his hands? So he says, we did a plan. We would invite them for supper. They had a dinner. And then on each table there is a card. When we make an altar call, they will fill in that card. Then we cut hundreds of them. Wisdom. 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 Amen. I've often told you that if you want to hold a crusade in the, in the stadium, you most likely will not have many of the woodlands people. And Kablonga ones. You will have most of them from Baoleni and others. But how many of you know that when you win one leader, you would have won almost the whole company? Because he can actually simply say, uh, today we are knocking off this Wednesday at eight, I mean, about 16 hours, that we can actually all go to church at 18 hours. And if anyone if he doesn't go to church, I will not pay you. Do you think they will stay? They will go home. Now, for us, we are always thinking of winning a person who is influential for his offering. 
We must win them for the people that are leading. One gentleman simply said, Me says, How can I be saved? Ask Paul. Paulo. Then he says, Me and my house. Amen. You know, many years ago, one of the lecturers asked us a question. He says, Why do you always look forward to win? the servant, I don't win the owner of the house. Says, if you win the owner of the house, he can command the servant to come to church. Let's go quickly. In Acts chapter 8, read it at your own time, you find the Bible says, from verse 26 to 38, the Holy Spirit tells uh, uh, Philip and says, hey Philip, leave the crusade, go into the desert. Philip, the desert. And guess when he's in the desert? He sees the eunuch, often with the, the minister of finance, who was looking after all the treasury of the queen of Ethiopia. And he said, found now, let's close with a few things. Number one, verse 16 says, the great supper. The great supper. 16, part, part, part A of that. Now listen carefully. <laughs> of course, many times, we have been taught of late to say, you know, it's very important that you, you eat light supper. In the Bible, they were eating the real meal in the evening. Now, that doesn't mean you should not eat the real meal in the lunch. <laughs> lunch. Actually, they ate supper, most of it because it was after work, then they would sit down and eat supper. No, I, I, know, I, I have been told several times you should actually be eating light meal. When I went to Bible school sometime back in the 80s, early 80s, mid 80s, in the morning we had a heavy breakfast, lunch, we had heavy lunch, nice ones. I, I didn't mind. In the evening, we were eating, for my, it was the first time to eat cold meat and some vegetables, the raw vegetables, what do you call them again? Salads. I, me, I thought maybe we are just having an appetizer. I didn't even know what appetizer is that time. And guess what? That was supper. No, I protested. I said, no, 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 no. They asked me, says, but you have had supper. I said, no, 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 no. That was not supper. He said, okay, you can have tea. So I had the bread like this. Because when I was growing up, we ate with my father. It was supper. The real supper. God, God called meat. Number Now, Jesus is asking a question. Yes, I please hear this. By this gentleman. Says, Blessed are they that shall eat supper, you know, in the kingdom, bread in the kingdom, and so forth. And Jesus says, talks about the, the parable. The great supper, it is simply means it is the free grace and mercy of God revealed in the gospel of Christ. There is, there is and there shall never be anything greater than the gospel of Jesus Christ. There will never be a story than the burial, I mean the death, 
the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. There shall never be any other. That's why Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 16 for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God to change lives. Whosoever believes. Nothing can change a man. Nothing can touch the heart of the man. Except the gospel. It is the great supper. Come on say amen. Amen. Nothing. Nobody can be changed by anything. It doesn't matter what story you can tell them. History cannot change anything. It can just give you the information. Science can change you much. It can change your physical, but cannot change you eternally. Only the gospel. That's why Jesus said, The great supper. The gospel. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Quickly. Verse 4. Without this gospel, you are blind. You are blind. Even if you wear glasses. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Bible says, whose minds the God of this age has what? Blinded. Please, look at me for a moment just for a few nothing can open the mind of a man apart from the gospel the wickedness of man you cannot deal with it without the gospel. The Bible says, whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe. What's the next statement? Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them. Do you know that every time the gospel is preached, the glory of Christ is revealed. It's the great supper. I know we'll be coming to this one, part two. When you commit a sin, which may not take you to hell, but it robs you of your position. When you miss cell meetings, when you miss the meetings that God is setting you, when you miss church, you don't know. You don't know what you are doing. You don't know what you are doing. You don't know what you are exactly doing at that time. If you understood, you would not do that. Hmm. There's a guy, his name is Katwishi. I don't know if his right name. Katwish. Until I understood what it meant to be Katwish. Then I said, what kind of a name? How can you give yourself a name, Katwish? How many of you remember the guy who used to pass through the church? He wasn't a member of the church. His name was Lesa. His son was Karufianya. It was a very interesting name. His first name was Lesa. His last name was Kadufianya. Lesa Kadufianya. He was a friend to my son in the church. Let's go to number two. Hey. 
D. Notice that this great gospel. I used to read it another way until yesterday. I saw Na something. Look look at the the then he said English. to him, a certain man gave a great supper. We have looked at that. A great supper is the gospel. Amen. Na, Come on, church. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. 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 But look at this. And what's the word he invited? What? At now, for a long time, I only thought he invited three. Have you noticed that? that? Come on, look at me. I thought he invited three because there are only three guys there. You have noticed that? The one who excused himself because he had just gotten married. One who had, who say, who had excuse that I have just bought land. So I must go and see it. In the night. I have bought trucks. I must go and test them in the night. <laughs> we'll come to that. Then you will find out. And you will judge yourself. That some of the excuses you have. I think God. Up says that he looks down and says, Come on, Jamana or Jenimambara. He thinks that I don't see. I cannot come for supper because I've gotten married. Why not go with your wife? Yeah. Hallelujah. But the key point is here. He invited many. There were not only three. The three are basically an example of a wider excuse that you'll find in church. But he did not invite the three only. He invited many. Say after me, invited how many? Many. Talk again, invited how many? Many. So you need to understand that God in Christ Jesus has invited the whole world. And there is enough in the gospel for everybody in the world. God does not any want your neighbor to perish. He has invited all. Nobody is destined to hell. You see this thing we have had where to say, Koma, this one is going to hell. God never destined anybody. 1982 we were casting out a demon in Chawama and the young lady stood up and said me I can't be saved because we have, I've already been judged by God huh? this person said that my pastor is late now Say, no, 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 no. That is not true. I didn't know much. I said, no, 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 that's not true. Only the devil and the demons have already passed judgment. No human being yet have passed judgment. So don't judge them. Don't send them to hell before judgment. They can be saved. Amen. Amen. Number three. The Bible says, Servant. Verse 17. It says, And sent his servant at supper. Servant. You know. You are God's servant to proclaim the gospel. Okay. One brother said to me, this one, 
cannot be saved unless God himself comes. I said, that's true. But how many of you know that God himself came and preached the gospel to Cain and Cain still sinned? Okay. God created man. Please, because we have a tendency of picking unscriptural statements and apply it to ourselves. God created man with one of the most powerful things. A whip. <laughs> you can decide so to go to hell and God will have nothing to do with it. He cannot help at all. You are going to go to hell at your own will. You can decide to go to heaven. It's all up to you. God can't intervene against your will. Somebody told me, he says that you know God chose a wife for Adam. He didn't. No. He showed him a wife. Or he showed him a woman. It is Adam who said, This is what? Born of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. Can I divert a little bit? Can I divert a little bit? When he said that, that statement, I just started it some two, three weeks ago in the Bible. By the way, when he made that statement, what did he mean is it? This is very good. That is, that, this is beautiful. I will continuously pursue it. When, whether one marries a woman, a man must never stop pursuing her. Even when she has given several children, he must continue pursue her. That's what that word means. Ah, come on, talk to me, man. He must continue pursuing her whether the figure has gone flat or not. Continue pursue her. That's what that scripture means. However, the sister also must not look like Nyau even in the bedroom. That's what No. Pursue her. Even 25 years, pursue her. She must be the focus of your pursuance. That's what Adam meant when he said, This one is born of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Tell your neighbor, this is a good teacher. Have you got the point? A woman was created to be pursued. There is no woman who is ugly. They have to choose be to be ugly. Even in old age, they must still be pursued. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? How did we come to that? The will. Come back to that. So God did not. <laughs> God did not give Adam a wife. Adam chose a wife. Then the day came when he said, the wife, the woman you gave me. From that time, when sin, when sin entered in. in. He pointed to nothing but him, the woman. And the woman pointed to the snake. And the snake had no one to point to. <laughs> now, if you hear this carefully, God, he does not mean that God did not know. Ah, come on, wave your hand and say praise the Lord. 
It didn't mean that God didn't see what was going on in the garden. He knew he's God. He saw he knew. But he had one challenge. He could not overthrow the authority that he set in place himself. If he did that, he was going to seize in God. He created man and he said to man, Please forget. You, let's create man and what shall he do? He shall rule on earth. So at that time, there was a ruler on earth. These are some of the stupid things we pick, we pick from the air to say, I can do things above an authority over you. Be careful. God doesn't do that. He didn't. He stayed out of the drama. He didn't do anything. Do you think that he, when Jesus said, guys, do you think I cannot call guys from heaven and wallop you all? He said it. But guess what? God was waiting for his will. The greatest salvation for man is not so much of his spirit, but the salvation of his will. The day you will discover that your will is extremely important. It's an authority. A man is a product of his choices. Amen. Amen. Are we together? So after me, a servant. You are God's servant. To invite all. Invited for supper. Please put Romans chapter 10 as we're coming to close on the teaching particularly. Romans chapter 10. I want you to see something. There is no way God is going to preach the gospel on earth. Please. God couldn't come and preach. He had to permit if, um, what's it? Mary to create a body for him. That's why he says you have prepared a body for me. Are you with me? He had to prepare a body for God. That's why his name is Emmanuel. A man in a, I mean, God in a physical body. Lesa mumubiri wabuntu nse. Imo andu mwe. Mumbe rakodi. Are you hearing fi. what I'm saying? Bushemu na mwe fiyo nde so sa. My wife knows the interpretation that you will have. Will have to do In English, I'm, you shall bring us. <laughs> Are you in the house? Bushemu ni munganda. There is a way. We need to change. Inshila eo muinda pili bukila. God. Lesa. Had to come in the flesh. Otherwise, he was an illegal person on earth. It had to take the flesh of the human being. Jesus yes, is the flesh. Mubiri. Christ Christu. is the God. Nilesa. That's why he says. Echo atila. A child is born. But a son is given. Jesus, the son of God, was not born. He was given by the Father God. But the physical body had to be born. Now, what am I to bring to you? Nobody can be won to Jesus by an angel. When they do, they become Islam. Because nobody is permitted to do that. Only the human being like you and me have been given the authority to preach the gospel. I want to turn to your neighbor and say, God is depending on me. Can you imagine that? 
He depends on you. You are his servant. Romans chapter 10 verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not what? Head. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse and how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring what? Glad tidings of the good things of Sabbath. You are God's instrument. Number last. It's verse 17d. The Bible says 17. And sent his servant at supper. Time to say to those who were invited. Come. For all things. For come. How many things? For how many things? Are now what? Ready. They shall come. There is no another Jesus to die for you. All things are ready. Oh, is now ready. Jesus. Yes, Christ. He was buried. Raised from the dead. He is right now sitting at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit has been poured out. The church is here. All that you need to be saved is here. Ufulanji. Because people are still trying to discover God somehow. Salvation. No, no, no. People are still waiting for God to come through and say, He shakes him. Hey, now my son. You know, I had a brother who told me he was fasting for 21 days, day and night, for God to give him a passion. No, no, day and night was actually passion. It says, for God to give him a passion for souls. I said, I said brother, you, I, I don't know how you did that. Whether he gave you the passion, that's God between God and you. But the fact is, he simply said, go. He didn't say, no, 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 the Bible says he had compassion for so. He said, no, he said, go. Go, don't you need to fast and pray for passion for so. There's some painful passion. Okay, no, you, he has already said. At when are so sakale? Go. When you hear the gospel, don't harden your heart. Repent now. When you hear the call to preach, respond with agency and confidence. I am the son. Whom the Lord has given us. <laughs> he is fairly new. He is not here. He is actually in, out of this province. He is fairly new. But he has a zeal. I have had many times to stop him. To go out there. He tells you no no. We, we need to go. Bishop Ngami told me about his pastor ba, in the Eastern Province. He says we have to tell him, sit down. He was planting churches almost in every village. They have more than 20 churches in Eastern Province. Even deep down in Mozambique, he has no car. He only walks many times. So they have to buy him a bicycle. A motorbike. A motorbike. So the boy, a motorbike after we bought the hours. Because they asked me. At you at 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 I, said, yes. I said, no, because the pastor Mukushi was very interested. He was going deep Dure. And he says, oh, okay. Okay, they are listening internationally. I, <laughs> he, he was going deep. At so I said, 
So he says, you did not say yes. So he bought, they put him a, bike, a motorbike. We bought the pastor to push a motorbike. He says, I have a bike. I Are you in the house? And we're about to buy the other two elders that bicycle where I can have a, I think it's a kind of a motor you can just, you know, hey, you, where you can tover if it goes down or you can just go to the roof. Because they go down. Why? Because they talk to us about people who are walking for 20 kilometers. He says, we need to do something we will actually be knocking off today. Almost man, men of you already looking at the watch that side. And guess what? From here, you are gone. No soul, no prayer for a soul. No prayer for a soul. No prayer for a soul. But yet you are the instrument God wants to use. You are the instrument God wants to use. You are still waiting. When elder will come, you know the Lord has just shown me that you are now a reverend. There's a man. He wrote a book. He says, when I came to Jesus, I was so zealous that people pushed me into Bible school. It was when I was in Bible school when I realized I was not being called by God for the pulpit. Ah! But he has called me to win a soul. Please hear this. We must go quickly. In John chapter 4, as I close, Jesus said, go quickly. But he said this statement, I want you to see. We must go quickly and bring them in. I will be talking about bring them in in the next phase. John chapter 4, Jesus says in verse 35. Please put it up there. I want you to see something. We need to know that the soul of your father, your mother, your neighbor, your sister, your husband, who it is the soul of the nation is depending on you. Do you not say they are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, what did they say? Lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they will be ready tomorrow. No, for they are already white for harvest. Someone is out there waiting for you. You can't continuously be walking alone to church. Now, can I have the, either the chief usher or the deacon? Can I have my sleep, please? The sleep I ask it to be made. Now, the action that the Lord told me is very simple. Okay. There's a card here. For all those that are willing, please ushers, be ready, be on the position. We are going to pledge for a soul, not souls, for one soul. In the next 60 days. Just one soul. So you're going to pledge that I, Julia Mwenda, pledge to pray and invite, then you put the name, if you can, to the feast of the gospel on, and then you sign and you put a date of today. So, that's yours. Please, if you are willing, would you lift up your hand? The ushers are coming. Ushers, could you quickly see those hands and say if you are willing? That means the others that may not be willing. So don't bother yourself with those that are not willing. Give those that are willing. Lift up your hand. I need some people. By the way, all the praise team, you need to give a soul to Jesus. Makarangono for a long time. 
So, everybody who is willing, please give. And if you receive that, I can still see hands raised up. That's why we printed few. Because we didn't want to push everybody who is not willing, no. But for my wife and I, we have no choice. We always bring skis today. Uh, they can't see your hand. Uh, there's, two, there's hands here. Every el I mean, elders, please, all oh, the elders are having one. Have you got already one? Are elders are waiting for you. Okay, they didn't lift their hand. No, they miss by force. The Bible says compel them. Quickly, ashes, quickly, ashes. We want to get to fill up that form. Praise the Lord. They, they are here. Is they lifted a long time ago. Hallelujah. We didn't. Get, if you don't have a pen, your neighbor has borrow and take it back because it may tell you if you go with it, take me to the owner. Take me to the owner. Remember, for the next, all the deacons and all the elders must have that form. They should have that form. One soul. Apparently, even every member of the church who is a member of the church must have a form. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you can remember a name, put it there. Lesa Karufyanya. Kakavarika. Kakasua. Put it there. Hallelujah. You may think I'm not in the spirit right now. I am. Ashes, every Asha must have one. It's only 60 days. 60 days. If you have written and it's done, just lift it up. And somebody will, the Asha will come and pick it up. You must bring somebody quickly. Go out quickly and bring them in. Have you written? Just one. It's 60 days. Every member of Bethel must have one. Have you finished them all? Have you noticed any member of Bethel who hasn't picked it? Okay, the, she is here. Just give her one. There, there are two of them there. I'm told so. Just one song. Just one so, one so, mama, one so, what's one so? One so. Them themselves were brought to Jesus by somebody, so they must bring somebody. Everybody must bring somebody, one so. One so. It's a point of action. Sixty days. Oh, yes. Because it will be listed down and then you will give you back your... your, your. We are after listing. Because we must have the data that Mrs. Chaponda pledged a saw on this particular day in the office. And the intercessors and the elders and the cell leaders will have a particular list. Then that, that same thing are you listening to me? That sleep will get back to you through your envelope of offering. Those who uh, you, you give them. You say, uh, here is your sleep. Now pray as we pray. As the soldier pray, as the elder pray for you, for that soul. 
But the soul must come. I didn't say the soul will come. Make up. No, it must come. In how many days? Sixty days. That means the planners of this church must begin to plan how they are going to accommodate almost a hundred plus people. Hmm. Hallelujah. Sixty days is up to when? How many can count better? Second. 17th November. At 17th so, November, Mkwane. 17th November, Sunday. Okay. Is that correct? So we must celebrate. Because on that particular day, we will have a celebration service for the people that have been won to Jesus. Yes. Yes. <laughs> to be Friday. Great. So we will have a celebration. Whether it's on Friday or we put it on a Sunday, which will be the 19th, we will celebrate all of us. Whether we, whatever date we choose, we will celebrate the winning of how many people? Hundreds that will be sitting here won by you. Ashes, there are still some people here with slips. Could you please come and collect them? After that, make sure, Asha, when you collect the slip, it has a name and it has a date where it has been signed. All right, everybody has picked, taken. Please, can I have them here? I want to pray over them. As I commit them to the Lord. When we talk about pledges, often people talk, think about nothing else but money. No, no, no. There's a pledge for souls. Etamboyo, did you feel one? To go for one or two? Bless the Lord. I mean, it's your choice. You can go for one, you can go for two. You know. <laughs> Have you done it? Ashes, I need those papers here. And I'm going to ask the team, pastoral team, that including all the elders and all the deacons, would you come through? And I need a table here. Uh, let's use this where we're going to put them there and we're going to put our hands on it and we're going to pray put them on the altar of the lord there because have you are you done okay are they all can i ask all the elders to come through if you're seated down there please would you join your hands as in a spirit of agreement please come over elders with me here Okay, I guess, it will, okay, they're still coming through. Because we want to put our hands there and we want to pray. And uh, uh, all the deacons, all the elders, please come through. Okay, let's go and come in a circle form. We are.